Okay, so for this next part, uh, we're actually going to get into the, the notebook on Colab. So uh, you should have already uploaded your um, this demand estimation IPNYB notebook into um, into Google Colab, and it should be open right here. If it's not, then you need to go back and look at the previous videos and get to this point where you have this um, this notebook loaded into Google Colab. Again, not just loaded into. Uh, you don't want to just be. You know, you can also see it here in um, GitHub but we're not gonna work in GitHub here. So you can see the same thing in GitHub, but that's not where I want us to be. So if you're not there, go back and get it into Google Colab. Other videos will tell you how to do that. So uh, continuing on, um, I've, I've, I think I've mentioned before each of these cells. So, so you'll notice that there are different kinds of cells. See, so I want you to click on the cells. You can go ahead and now interact with this uh, notebook. Um, one thing I'll say, actually, before we interact with it fully, uh, what you can do is actually connect. The, you see this connect button? This is actually going to connect you to the Google server to actually let you run this program on the Google server. So you see, when I connected, I'm going to actually allocate myself RAM and disk space. And now I'm all booted up, and I can run this code on the Google server. So um, you see that you can run code by clicking on the cell and either pressing the play button or press control plus enter and that will also execute the cell. So for instance, if we come down here to my first block of code and I hit, I can either hit play to run this code or I can hit control enter and run that code also. Now, um, one thing that people sometimes ask is, hey, I see that you have different lines numbered on your code. I don't see that on mine. You can actually add those lines by going to the settings and uh, playing around there to um, to show line numbers and just check that box, okay? That's something you can do. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is go through this line by line, and that's actually how I learned how to code was going through line by line. Uh, but um, what you're gonna wanna do first off is uh, look at this first one. It says import, import pandas. So um, pandas is that it's that package that's going to be good for data manipulation, and this line is just going to import this, okay, so that we can have access to that package, and I'm going to import it as pd. Now I could call this anything I want. I say pd right here um, because this is sort of a standard for pandas, and it's short. So I'm going to I'm going to invoke pd pandas many times maybe in this um, in my script and I don't want to have to type out pandas every time that's just very time consuming so I just rename this PD and I stick with convention just and I, I could call this cheeseburger I could say whatever I want but I'm just calling it PD to stick with convention um, so that's what the first line does uh, second line is import another package matplotlib uh, which is a package that's really good for doing different visualizations that we're going to utilize. And so um, I'm actually going to import this as PLT. So, so again, I could call it anything. PLT is short. It's a conventional thing that um, everybody uses, and so I'd stick with it. Um, again, I'm going to repeat this for import NumPy as NP. Now, NumPy is is really good for doing kinds of calculations and things so we're gonna so we're gonna need that and then uh, finally um, the last line six here you see from so, so I'm taking uh, something from I'm taking this uh, model this linear model from SK learn so it's from SK learn and in the linear model class I'm gonna import linear regression so this is just instead of so SK learn actually is this package that can do all kinds of stuff. So you can you can deploy machine learning models, all kinds of models with sklearn. And, um, and so I actually don't need all of their models. I'm just gonna take linear regression because that's all I'm gonna use here for right now. And, um, and then obviously I won't have access to their, some of the other models, but if I wanted to, I could just write a line to import those packages too. 
So the very first thing you typically do in Python code is import all of your packages and dependencies that you're going to need to run the code below. Um, second thing I typically do is I set any kind of preference options for, uh, for this notebook. And just this, this is one option that I typically set, which is, uh, so you see I call invoked PD, that's pandas, this is a pandas option. And I um, do period to call this method of set option, that's set underscore option. And then I'm gonna display the max rows and that's gonna be equal to none. What that means is that when I print out a column of data, sometimes uh, the data can be very large. And if I don't have this option here, it will just show me when I, hit, when I, when I try to look at the data, I'll only see like the first like bit of data and then it'll stop showing me the rest of it. Um, this is very nice in a lot of cases, especially you think if you had like a million rows, you wouldn't wanna have all those million rows just like printing out on your screen like crazy. So this would be a bad option in that case. But we have a fairly small data set, and actually I like to look at the data quite extensively when I first play with data if I can. Even for a subset, it's nice. Okay, so so this was my options my, for just and, and my import my packages, and then um, and then the, the the next line actually is to go get the data. Now let me show you how this works. Uh, this is kind of nice. So all I'm doing here is um, in line 11. You see I write data underscore URL. That's just the name that I created. Again, I could have written cheeseburger or you know French fries or anything I want under the sun, but, um, but that would have actually maybe made it harder for me to understand what it was. So what I try to do is stick with naming conventions. Also, if you name something, they ca it cannot have a space in the name. So that's why I use this under slash, underscore here to connect this and make this one long string. Um, so it has to be continuous. Nice, that's nice if it's short and nice if it, it's meaning. And then, um, and then, so what I'm doing here is data underscore URL. I just define this, this thing, this, and, and I'm gonna say this is equal to, uh, what is this URL? Well, this URL, if you go back to, um, the Kaggle, or sorry, you go back to GitHub. And uh, if you go back to the Soda main page and then actually look at the data. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to import data into, into, um, into our GitHub. So, sorry, from our GitHub into our collab. So uh, go to, go back, if you go back to GitHub and you go back to the data, Soda, dot csv and then you go click on that raw file again and then again co copy this url so go ahead and copy that and and what you can write is um, and then you can paste that right in here it's the same thing so if i just this is just data underscore url and i'm just defining that and then when i define it I wanted to define it since this is like a string of numbers and such i'm sorry a string of uh, letters I want to either put it in quotes or apostrophes. So I can either go like this or I can go like that and then put it in the inside. It doesn't really matter which one I pick. The only thing is, is that I have to stay consistent within a single line of code. So I don't want to mix apostrophes and quotes. And in general, I just stick with apostrophes because it's like a less, lesser keystroke. So you can just hit one apostrophe and you see it automatically, um, the, the worksheet actually put two apostrophes in here because it closed it off. So where you have one apostrophe has to be closed with another apostrophe. And, uh, the, and the worksheet automatically did that for me. Just I only hit one apostrophe, but it, it actually added two. And put my, blink, I put my cursor right in the middle. That's very nice, right? So I can just paste my code in there. You see that's the line of code I'm trying to run. It's the same as the one above. And this is just defining this URL. And then uh, the next line of code on 13 is uh, where I'm going to actually bring this into, um, where I'm actually going to import this. And so I'm going to use this using pandas. So I, I invoke pd, because that's how I have to find a pandas. And I'm going to go pd dot, which is going to call this method uh, read underscore csv, a csv file, and I have a method for reading. Um, and then 
so if, if I were gonna just write, type this in, you can see I, I would go pd dot read uh, csv, and then uh, put a parenthesis, okay, and type in your data uh, underscore URL. So uh, this will read it in, and actually you'll see what I've defined here on the left hand. So I made an equation. And on the left hand side, I wrote DF. Again, I just created this as a convention because this is going to be a pandas data frame. So data frame just stands for um, my pandas data frame that I'm importing. And I could have called this anything I want. Again, I'm just sticking with a, an easy convention here. Um, but you see what I've done in this line is I've imported my dependencies, set some options, and imported um, a pandas data frame. And how can I run this? Well. I run this by either clicking play or hitting control enter. So go ahead and run that code. Oh, warning not authorized by Google. That's again because I wrote this, but go ahead and run it anyway. I did not, I'm not gonna hack your computer, I promise. And there you go. We've, you just run your first line of code. Oh, you know what? I kind of messed up because I should have had you run one other line of code. Uh, one of the very first things that you will always learn how to do is uh, print hello world, I guess. Uh, maybe we should do that, but we can maybe, I guess, wait. <laughs> print hello world is like what everybody does the very first time. Um, but we're just jumping past that. Anyway. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Um, oh, actually, we'll keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so so the next thing I want us to look at is uh, we can look at this. So so here I want you to do something. Go after the after this block. I want you to go ahead and create another block of code. How you can do that is one of two ways. Either click on this block and you can hit code right there, and that should click one. Or you can kind of hover in the middle and it'll pop up. You can create a code block. Uh, so let's go ahead and just look at this. So we created this, we already, so you have to have had run this, this block in order for these next blocks to work. But um, let's go ahead and just go DF, that's my data frame. If I go DF and I just run, what does that look like? It's taken it a while. It's taken it a while, oh boy. It's really thinking hard about this. I've got a slow internet connection and I think I'm also gobbling up a ton of resources with this. So you see it just printed everything under the sun, which that's a lot. I, I got all those thousands. Remember I said, I, so th the reason why I've got such, so I've hit, I just typed in DF and hit enter, and it just basically printed my entire data set, which you see, I'm already like, there's just so many thousands of lines, and this can be, that's, can be very kind of, can be kind of a pain. So one of the ways actually, if you want to kind of get back and just look at a smaller bit of the data, you can use this method called head. So, so type in df.head and end that with a parentheses and then just hit enter. You see? And what this is gonna do is just print the very first five lines. The first thing I want you to notice is that each of these lines are indexed. You've got an index over here and it goes from zero to four. That's an important thing to notice is that indexing starts with zero. It does not start with one. That's a very important thing to know. Um, so the first five lines are indexed zero to four. And this is our data. We've got the ID, date, city, latitude, longitude. We already looked at these things in the CSV file, but you can really see what's uh, covered here. This is going to be uh, shop sales of different types of soda for a given month and giving the price, the average price and the total amount sold that particular shop in that month. Um, so the, the, the DF head file is a nice way to just sort of look at uh, kind of what you have in your data frame. Uh, just take a nice little glimpse at it. Uh, the one thing that we first probably are going to want to explore are what types of data are these individual columns, right? So you'll see that um, ID looks like it's a number Date has a mixture of numbers and slashes. It looks like a date, but you have to think like with a computer, they either see numbers or they're gonna see uh, these things called strings. Strings are just gonna be this alphanumeric 
kind of things, um, like Athens is a string. Uh, when you get slashes in there, that's also kind of a string. And so, uh, and so it sees those as sort of the same almost. Uh, latitude, again, we get um, numbers. Okay, we've got strings here under shop. Um, brand is a string. Now, a string type variable is going to be uh, defined in in uh, in pandas as a uh, as an object, and so objects are going to be strings. And anyway, if I wanted to see exactly um, what each data, data type was, that's a very important thing to first look at. What I can do is use this data type. It's just df dot d types, and go ahead and hit. Control Enter and just run that code, and this tells you every single one. Now, if you notice over here, you see capacity. Capacity. What is it over here? The data type. It's an object. I mean, this is a string. Why is it a string? It's got numbers. Oh yeah, but it's also got letters. You see, so so if it's got any letters at all, it's going to be classified as a string. Now, um, one of the things that you are going to have to do is learn how to learn about these type of uh, about any type of uh, methods. So one of the biggest places you're gonna go is actually gonna be to Google, believe it or not. And just, um, so if you wanted to say no, I'm gonna show you how to do this. If you wanted to know about, um, about data types, you could just click on Google. And then just, what do we have? We have a pandas, a D types. And you can actually look, look for the documentation It'll take you a little while to kind of get used to looking at documentation. This looks kind of a little strange. Okay, CCC user's guide for more. It doesn't really tell you that much here. So this is all I have here. So let's go look at the user's guide. You're gonna have to just get used to like going around some of these doc. The documentation you'll find out is eventually you'll start to really love it. Um, so documentation, you can see we've got um, We've got actually different types. So you can talk about the, uh, the date time type. So here we have string aliases, date time 64. Um, there's documentation on date times, categorical variables, um, periods. We have uh, intervals, uh, integers. Integers, uh, there's all different types about integers. You got numbers, um, string data types. A Boolean data types. Okay, there's all different kinds of data to learn about. So, uh, but the main thing I wanted to show you is just if you have like a curiosity about what something is or a specific line of code, you can actually just go to Google and Google search it. And if you have, if you see that it's a method of a specific type of package, just type the package first. So you could do like, in this case, I could have done like uh, data data frame data types or um, something like that. Or just uh, yeah, you can you can do this. So so the, there's just the, the main thing is that you have to know is that you will you will end up actually having to learn a lot of this yourself, and it doesn't matter how you start off. It's just how it goes in terms of learning data. Now now let's look at something really practically speaking. We notice that the date is an object. That's a string. But you know we're gonna want to try to plot dates like over time, and you have to have those, those things have to be sequential. So we can see that this is sequential, but it's actually just a string, and, and you know a computer doesn't know like so how can you make like two different words sequential except for alphabetical order? And it doesn't make a lot of sense here for this kind of kind of date. So we actually have to change this to a date time object, and the next block of code below does exactly that. Um, you see what I'm doing here? I'll just run you through. I'm saying data frame, that's my data frame, and uh, date, so bracket date. Did I show you brackets? I didn't show you how to get brackets. So let's, let's look with that, let's, let's, let's look at this, okay? I'll, I'll show you, because so there's some new notation here. What if I go data frame, what, what kind of, uh, what kind of columns do I have here? I've got price, so if I wanted to just call that one particular column, what I could do is actually just hit data, data frame, bracket, and then, um, do this apostrophe free and then actually type price. And I don't want to print that whole thing because it's long. So I'm just going to do head again. And you can see what this, you see what that did? It just printed the price 
Um, so you can print. So, so you see, actually, by by uh, specifying data frame and then a bracket, I can actually define. If I did this without the head, it would be the entire column. I can go ahead and do that. See, it's the entire column. Um, I'll do head. You see, so so what what the first what the first block here is doing is that I'm def I'm redefining the date, and I'm going to invoke pandas and the data frame. Uh, sorry, to data time to date time um, method, and just plug in that original series. So that that original series was just that column with the date. I'm just plugging it into this um, to this program method. Well then, so, so there's already like a huge code base there that will take this um, this date and actually transform it into something that a machine can look at and understand as something that's sequential. And that's what my whole point is that all that can be done with like a single line of code. I just did it right there, and uh, I'm gonna, I re-index things. You don't need to actually understand this. This is actually a little bit of formatting. You can look through this. It'd be helpful to you, but um, for right now, I'll just go ahead and run that. And then, if you run the next block, you'll see that date is now a date time 64 data type. It's no longer an object, so that's all I've done there. Now, um, the very last part, and this is where we're going to end for this uh, session, is I've written a whole block of code down here. Now we have our data in the data frame. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and click on it says where it says try running each of these lines separately. Click on that on that box and go ahead and add code. Add a box of code right below that, and then I want you to run each of these lines individually. So take this, copy it, paste it up here, and execute it. Okay, we already did this one before. Um, but I want you to go through and execute these one by one. So copy, paste, execute, and then look at what well, look what it did. Okay, I wrote you some comments on the right to tell you kind of like what each of those does. So you see this one just like printed the entire data frame. Um, and we already know what DF head does. You can also type those in. That's another way to learn. Just. So head, and and then go through these one by one. Okay, uh, you'll see like calling multiple, uh, calling uh, multiple columns or single columns, and notice the syntax uh, that I, I put in when I, with multiple columns. I have to use a double bracket and then a comma to separate the two. Um, but just really just go through the, and run these one by one and try to understand what's going on. When you get down to this group by, DF group by, um, we may need to have another tutorial, but go ahead and try to run that anyway, and try to just play around and understand what those group bys are doing. Look at the documentation, and in the next videos, we'll actually go through that, but I'd like you to try to figure those things out if you can on your own, uh, without me just telling you what they do. And, um, and, and really try to look at the code. Now, how you can also understand it is you can put different, you can sort of change this up. So I, I did DF group by brand capacity and I threw in price. Well, let's see what happens if you add, like say quantity in here and see what, just see how that changes things or add something else in here and see how it changes things. Just play around with, like, so basically just copy a line of code from here. And I want you to run it line by line, go back up paste it in, run it, and then also just kind of like change change the parameters in here, change the, pr the price, the quantity, or change some of these other things on, on, on this side. And I'm not gonna tell you exactly what they do, but um, just go ahead and play with it. You can also try taking off, oh no, actually you'll need to describe. Do that, play around with these, and we'll see you in the next class. That's as far as we're gonna go for this uh, particular uh, series that's far enough, but make sure you can at least get through and run through and understand each of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have you. I'm going to ask you questions later on, and um, give you all different kinds of code. You'll just have to modify the code in order 
to answer. I won't give you the code, but I'll give you um, code that's similar and has the different elements, and you'll just have to modify it in order to um, to give me the answer. I won't expect you to be able to write everything from scratch right from the get-go. This is your first day, so we're going to go with it like that. Anyway, we'll see you next class, and, uh, and that will be all. Okay? Um, that's it.